Whether you're a dancer or not, I'm sure you've heard somewhere that lifting weights or doing strength training can make you bulky or make you get big. If you're a dancer, you've probably been told that the only thing that's okay is Pilates or those types of workouts where you just do a million reps with tiny two pound weights. Now I feel like if you're a woman, you hear this a lot, even if you're not a dancer, we're all just like afraid of getting bigger by lifting weights. So today I want to debunk this myth that strength training and weight training is going to make you bulky. It's gonna make you grow these big muscles and look like a bodybuilder. Because in truth, strength training and conditioning is really beneficial for everyone and especially dancers. And if you're wondering why I'm so passionate about this, this topic. I tore my ACL a year and a half ago and from that experience I started doing strength training to regain the muscle in my leg and I noticed such an incredible difference in the way that I dance and the way that I move and just how I feel as a person because of that extra strength and conditioning I did outside of dance. And also doing strength and conditioning work outside of dance is very good for helping prevent injuries and because I got injured I am now doing everything that I can to prevent it and I want to help you guys avoid injuries because I can Tell you it's not a super fun experience to not get to do what you love because you're injured. So I did some research for you and I'm gonna talk about the research behind muscle growth and getting bulky. I actually also brought in an expert in this field because he works with dancers on a daily basis doing strength and conditioning work. So if you don't want to trust my research on this, listen to him. He also brings up a really important message about body image issues in the dance world, so definitely stick through the video to hear what he has to say. It's definitely a message that everyone needs to hear. So if we want to unpack this whole idea that strength training will make you bulky, we need to rewind a little bit. <laughs> and talk about how you build muscle mass in the first place. In order to grow, your muscles have to respond to a variety of different factors. Arguably, the most important would be calories, so what you eat and drink, the level that you're training at, and the stress that you're putting your muscles under, and your hormones. Also, of course, your genetics and your body type, and to some extent, the specific foods that you're eating. To increase your muscle size, you have to put your body under stress, your muscles under stress. And you can do that by strength training or lifting heavy things, which could even be your own body through body weight exercises. So this stress causes little tiny micro tears in your muscles, which I know sounds kind of scary, but then your body has to work to repair those and then make your muscles stronger. And depending on all those factors I mentioned earlier, it could also cause them to grow a little bigger. Now, nutrition plays a huge role as well. You generally need to be eating in a calorie surplus to be able to gain muscle. So you would need to eat more than what your body requires simply to live, breathe, function, do your activities. Now, I don't want any of you to take this advice the wrong way and think, okay, sure, then I can strength train without building muscle. I just have to be really, really careful about what I eat because I don't want you to start getting into like a restrictive mindset in terms of food. Because unfortunately, a lot of dancers still have a lot of issues in terms of their relationships with food. And I don't want anyone to start going into restrictive cycles of diets and making sure you're eating super on track just because you wanna be able to strength train without getting bigger. I would say, and remember I'm not a professional, but just from my personal experience, you should just continue eating how you're eating if you think that you're being pretty healthy already, and you should be totally fine. For the most part, it'll be really difficult for you to gain mass unless you're overeating consistently. And if that is the case, or if just by me talking about this, you have some inkling in your mind that maybe your nutrition habits aren't where they should be, definitely recommend reaching out to a professional because I can tell you from firsthand experience, trying to regulate your own eating habits or fix things that you think are wrong all by yourself if you're not a nutritionist or a dietitian can be really damaging not only for your physical health but your mental health. And it's so easy these days to find reputable sources for nutrition advice. You can go on the internet and find someone to work with you virtually and it doesn't have to be this big scary thing. I would say look for someone with, with nutrition qualifications. It's even better if you find someone who is an actual registered dietitian. Okay, getting back on track. Like I've said a million times, it's really difficult for us to just gain muscle especially as women because of our genetic makeup. So females already naturally have lower levels of testosterone than males, which is a hormone used to repair and build bigger muscles. Now, there are a few things I want you to keep in mind if you're not already like well-versed in like fitness and strength terminology. Number one, you can't 
quote unquote, tone any specific region of your body. I know everyone says they want toned, long, lean dancer legs, or they want their arms to just be toned and not bulky, but that's not possible. So usually when we talk about looking toned, it just means you've lost a little bit of body fat and you've maybe gained a little bit of muscle and that makes you appear tighter and firmer. Another thing to think about is choosing the right exercises or the right programming for your body and for the goals you're trying to achieve. So here's another instance where you either one, wanna try and find a professional to give you guidance on what that might look like, or two, start doing some research on your own about different types of exercises. So following different accounts on Instagram from strength and conditioning professionals, even if that they have nothing to do with dance, they still have that core knowledge of strength and conditioning and what the different exercises can help you to achieve. Don't just stay on Instagram though, do your own research. There's, like I said, you have the internet and you can do a lot of research and find reputable sources for trusted information. So don't just listen to what dance teachers are saying to you about touching a weight will make you bulky. Do your own research. It's time for you guys to step up for all of us to step up and start questioning these things. Because I've been hearing it for years and years and years. And honestly, if I hadn't gotten injured and done strength training on my own, I probably wouldn't have had any notion that doing this is so helpful. So that's kind of just what I'm trying to get across today. I want you guys to continue to like have curiosity about the things that are told to you, not just in dance, but in life. Don't just accept the information that people are throwing at you. Do your own research form your own opinions. I just got like really dramatic there and passionate for a second. Let's go back to what I was talking about. What I was saying is if you are gonna be spending your time doing strength training outside of dance and incorporating it into your whatever your busy schedule is, you wanna make sure that you're optimizing what you're doing for your goals and for your needs. An example of what I mean by this, choosing the right forms of training for you and your goals is something like weighted ab exercises. So if I do a weighted oblique exercise, which is those little sides of your abs, sure, that's gonna strengthen my abdominal muscles. And if, if you wanna do them, go right ahead. But those can actually start to build up the muscles on the sides of your obliques and kind of make you look wider. And it's still muscle, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with looking like that if that's what you're trying to achieve. But I'm just saying there are other ways to train your core that will be more effective for you and your needs as a dancer than that, that specific exercise. So be careful with what you're choosing to do and like I said, do your research. So okay, I know I've thrown little sprinklings of this all throughout the video, but why should you strength train? Like what's the point? Let me tell you. Number one, you get stronger, duh. We can all agree that dance is very physically demanding, but it doesn't effectively train all of the muscles in your body the way that strength and conditioning does. There are certain muscle groups that no matter how much you dance are going to be left out. And this could put you at risk of injury because you have certain muscles that are overworking and other muscles that just aren't doing anything to balance it out. So for a lot of dancers, the weaker areas might be your hamstrings, it could be your core, it could be like your back. And doing strength and conditioning, I'm not just talking about strength lifting weights. I'm talking about also doing conditioning exercises like plyometrics, which are in a nutshell like jumping exercises. Those are really important because they can train your body to be more explosive and they improve your power in ways that doing small jumps and leaps is not going to achieve. So last thing I'm gonna say, even though there are a million other benefits that I could bring up about this, is it helps you with your neuromuscular control. This has actually been shown on a study with dancers and I know that most dancers already do have a really good I guess like body awareness and control over their muscles, but this can actually improve it. And who doesn't want to be a more controlled dancer? I don't know anyone that would say no to that. So before I bore you to death with all of these facts, I wanna bring in the video of the professional I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Jason Harrison. I'm gonna have to read this so I don't say it wrong. He is a certified strength and conditioning specialist, certified personal trainer through the National Strength and Conditioning Association, and a member of the International Association for Dance Medicine and Science. A whole mouthful. Here are his thoughts. Have you ever heard the claim that someone's gonna become bulky from doing strength training? Yes, um, that's still something that we hear a lot. This claim about bulk, like I, 
This is a really difficult thing for me to talk about because I have I'm I'm of two minds here. I mean, number one, just the science says that you can you can lift weights and not build huge muscles. Because if that were true, every 18-year-old boy who's trying to get big would be big. And when we know that that's just really hard to do. So just the science of that like old school thinking has been long debunked. However, it's complex because I, I don't want to even accept the framework of the question from people. Does lifting make you bulky? Because part of what we're doing, if we accept that, is that it's bad for women to get bigger. And I don't think that's true. And I don't think it's true in a dance con. Like people talk about lines and they talk about tradition and all that stuff. But like, I really think that some of these things are just baked into a, a, a kind of um, misogyny and a lot of times an anti-black misogyny where we try to police women's bodies. And so, you know, my answer to that is I reject the framework of the question, not from you, but like when other people talk about this, but also no, it's not going to make you bulky. <laughs> And I really wanted to show you guys that, not just because it helped prove the points that I was making throughout this video, but also because I want you to ask yourself, why is it so bad for you to gain muscle in the first place? I don't know when you're watching this video, but right now it's 2021 for me. And in my humble opinion, you might disagree, but I think that this stick thin body type shouldn't be the only body type that's accepted in dance. That's a whole nother topic in and of itself. I'm glad Jason brought it up and I would love to do another video talking specifically about this. You need to sit back and think, why do I care if I get a little bit bigger? Why do I care if I get a little bit of muscle? Shouldn't we be proud that we look strong? We're constantly comparing ourselves to other types of athletes and saying, we don't understand why people don't think dancers are athletes and i think part of it is we have these very like antiquated notions of what dancers should look like and i know that there is tradition involved in this that historically we've always just stereotyped dancers and ballerinas specifically as being these wispy thin graceful dainty people but what's wrong with shaking things up a little bit why do we continue like jason said to police people's bodies, especially women. Let me know what you guys think. Please leave some comments about this topic because I'd love to hear your thoughts on why this continues to go on in the dance world and how you think we can change it. Now, if you are looking for some professional guidance on strength training, definitely check out Jason's website. I'll have his information linked down below. But he just recently released an online resource, The Dancer's Guide to Strength, and it walks you through a sample training program for dancers. It includes like over 60 video tutorials and a three month sample program with worksheets. He literally built this resource to help dancers and dance educators start to incorporate strength training in their routines. You should also make sure to follow him on Instagram. I'm super grateful that he took the time to speak to me. Um, I will be releasing our full conversation. And if you wanna be the first to know when I release that conversation, and many other cool special projects. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the little notification button, and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Really helps me out and lets me know what kind of stuff you guys like. If you enjoyed this video, you can click here for another one you might like, and here for my last video. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!